Man, what a beautiful day. Good day to be in the woods. Do you know I've heard it said, and I believe it to be true, any day in the woods is a good day. But even so, some days are just special. This is one of those days. Wow. Can anything make it better? Well, maybe. How about a cup of coffee? I moved in from the shore where I had my lunch. I was in direct sunshine there and no breeze, and Lord, it got hot. It's nice here in the woods, just under the tr canopy of the trees. The light filtering down through, as you can see in the background. Perfect setting for a cup of coffee. So what I thought I would do is start a short series on making coffee in the woods. Bush coffee, if you will, or bushcraft coffee. And I don't profess to be an expert on coffee, but over the course of my career, I have consumed a fair amount of coffee, and I've gotten a little fussy. I do like to have a nice cup of coffee, and I'll go the extra steps it takes to make a nice cup of coffee. So what I thought I would do is start the series off in the most simplest, most common ways of making coffee in the woods, and then progress to ways that, uh, while there's more effort involved, the reward at the end is, is worth that extra effort. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we have for today. All right, to start, I have a little bag that I carry. That's my food bag you see sitting in that orange bag. is one of the dry bags. I put in a, enough food for an overnighter if I had to. Uh, certainly snack bars, a mixture of trail mix, you know, things that you need along the trail, some desserts, snack bars, as you can see. Ground coffee, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And this is my little, I don't know what you call it, drink bag, I guess. Uh, I've got a number of things in here, including hot chocolate, tea, a Starbucks refresher, which you just mix with water, and it's caffeinated, but it's a nice cold drink. Uh, I have some, a couple of hot uh, coffees in here that I want to show you. Here's one. Via Instant Coffee from Starbucks. Pumpkin Spice Latte. I mean, the fall is here, right? Today is the first day of fall. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite. I drink black coffee most of the time, but I do enjoy something sweetened and creamed once in a while, and I'll probably be using this maybe another week or two in the woods. That's the instant uh, refresher, the one that has caffeinated, orange-flavored drink. Nice on a hot day. Uh, not what I'm going to have today, though. Two more instant coffees from Starbucks. A dark roast and a, and a regular roast. Each of these will make about a six-ounce cup of coffee. Nice cup of coffee. Uh, that's usually what I do if I'm on the move and I, and I don't want to take the time to make a, uh, a better cup of coffee. It works. But uh, we can do better than that. Now, there are some choices. I'll show you what I'm going to end up doing today, and, but I'll show you a couple of alternatives. So I have this, this nice little filter basket. Uh, you can buy them online. I think MSR makes one. Uh, this one came from Mountain Equipment Co-op. You can see that it has been used a fair amount. I have my little Kapilka cup. holds about six to eight ounces. And I'm going to use this and pour some ground coffee into the filter, pour my hot water on top of that, and let it steep for a few minutes, pull the filter out, and I'll have some coffee. But there are some alternatives I thought I'd share with you. What I could have done, a little bit more work, well, actually not a lot of more work, just a little bit more size to carry, is a small Melita pour-over. So you'd sit that on top of your coffee mug, and there are these paper filters. I'm going to dig one out in a second. These paper filters are cone filters. Unfold it and put it in. And uh, pour your coffee through that. It works very well. Of course, one thing is you do have a wet coffee bag full of coffee grounds that you have to dispose of afterwards. And Yes, you could burn it, and, but better off you packing it out, of course. Let's say you don't want to carry this. Well, there is an alternative. Let me just set it up and I'll show you what it is. Okay, I set up the pour-over with one of the filters in it just to demonstrate what it would look like. I'm sure everybody's seen something like this before. You probably have one at home, but never thought to take it into the woods. It does work well, but uh, there is an alternative to using 
the pour over cup and you can still use those filters. Two alternatives in fact. Let me demonstrate one of them. You could take a stick, poke a hole through either side, set that in the mug. That may not work quite as well, but it does work well enough. That holds the, the uh, filter from dropping into the bottom of the cup and allows you to pull it out afterwards. And that works quite well if you don't have to carry this uh, plastic pour-over thing with you in the woods, just the filters. Alternatively, you could take the filter without the stick, put some coffee in it. You could do this at home, probably easier. Fold it over on both sides, make like a little tea bag out of it. Put a, draw, a string through it, and you've got a tea bag that you can just drop right into the cup, let it soak. The coffee all seeps through into your water, and uh, then you can dispose of this the appropriate way afterwards. But there is something that's actually made for doing that, which works even better, and I'll show you that. Now, I purchased these at David's Teas in the Halifax Shopping Centre, and basically what they are is an empty tea bag. You can see here there's a little drawstring in it. They're designed for their copious amounts of uh, teas that they have, but you can use coffee in it just as easily. You just open the top of it, pour some coffee in. I like to use about a, uh, not quite a tablespoon, well, maybe a tablespoon and a half, actually, for an 8-ounce cup, but for this, probably just a, not quite a tablespoon. Draw the string close. You can put the number of them all together in a plastic bag, and you're ready to go for the trail, and you've got coffee for a couple of days. So that's not a bad alternative. Not very expensive. A box of 100, probably about $7. 100 of these filters, that is. And, yeah, they work pretty good. But today we're going to use the filter method. So I'm going to set that up, and uh, then I'll bring it back when I'm ready to pour the water in. All right, here we go. The spoon we'll be using today is the one I used to, uh, as my entry into the spoon club, the one I carved at the Bush Calf, Nova Scotia Bushcraft craft Gathering in uh, August. Uh, it should be about a, a little bit more than a tablespoon, up to a level top of it, so let's give that a go. Yeah. A little strong is always good. Now if I bring this in close, you can see this is coarsely ground, and that does help. It helps with keeping the silt out of that uh, might seep through the very, very fine uh, filter itself. So coarsely ground coffee does help a little bit. And All right, we'll put that in. Now, a word on water. So this is lake water that I drew from the lake here. I did bring it to a boil and I took it off boil. There's two schools of thought on water and coffee. Uh, the first is, or one, one school of thought I should say, is that why not boil it? You have percolators, that's how they work. Cowboy coffee, that's how that works. Boil the coffee. The other school of thought is, and it's the more modern school of thought for coffee and coffee shops, is, is that the water should not be at boiling. In fact, it shouldn't be above 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is probably around 190 degrees Fahrenheit, because it's off boil for a few minutes now, but uh, that's the way we're going to do it today. In future videos, we are going to make bush coffee, otherwise known as coffee, cowboy coffee, but uh, today we're just going to do the pour over or the uh, filter method. Ooh, does that ever smell good? I have a little cap for that, just to retain a little bit of the heat. I'll let it set for a minute or two. How long? It doesn't really matter, I suppose, but uh, three or four minutes should be enough to extract all the goodness without getting bitter. So, yeah, that's how I'm going to make my coffee for the day. And I'll enjoy that. In the next video, we're going to make coffee uh, in a more advanced manner. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, Please hit the like button, share it with your friends, uh, subscribe. I'm a new to YouTube person, but uh, I think I might have something to offer. And uh, I encourage you to leave comments below. And uh, we'll see you in the woods. We'll see you on the trail. Get out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Bye for now.